With the PS5 lurking around the corner in 2020, looking to offer more beefier hardware and full backwards compatibility, let's take one last in-depth look at the PlayStation 4. I mean, really, what better time is there to discuss some of the secrets that the PS4 has held all these years? The system has undergone countless updates and reworked features, so even the machine that you bought back in 2013 has changed quite considerably. To be fair as well, the only real time that you ever sit down and learn what your system can do tends to come with that initial period where it's being set up, and you're just sitting scouring through all the instructions. After that, it's on Sony to put out YouTube videos, tweets, etc. to inform the millions of what they've added. And over the years, I'm willing to bet that the vast majority of owners don't actually know everything their PS4 can do. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and this is PS4, 9 Awesome Console Secrets Everyone Missed. Number 9. Setting Games to Download Remotely Through Rest Mode Rest Mode is without a doubt the MVP of the PS4's features post-launch, and something that would take years to be implemented properly. To get this working fully, head into Settings, Power Save Settings, and Set Features Available in Rest Mode. Here you can check Keep Applications Suspended, which basically equates to never turning your PS4 off, as games will wait until you turn the system back on again. Perhaps it's not great for energy bills, but if you don't want to keep booting up the system, and its games, it is a big ol' time save. Better than this is hitting Stay Connected, and then enable turning on PS4 from network. The latter means that the PS4 can communicate with the PlayStation app on your phone, which has a bunch of advantages. For example, say that you're at work while a new game comes out, you can purchase it via the PlayStation Store on the app, and it will download and install to your actual PS4. Also, while in rest mode, you'll be able to use the PS4 to charge controllers and update applications through the USB port, which is very useful while at work or asleep. Again though, remember to activate these settings in the systems menus. Number 8. Use Spotify on your phone and console simultaneously Added two years after launch, the music app Spotify offers pretty decent integration with the PS4, allowing users to flick through songs in two specific ways. First up, it's straight through the console. Navigate to the XMB for a full screen version, or use the quick menu by holding down the home button and go from there. If you've opened the full version for better functionality and still want a game, you can use a double tap of the home button to jump between the two, but more on that later. Secondly, there is a way more convenient way of using Spotify through your PS4. See, if you have the Spotify app on your phone and the PS4 is linked to the same internet connection as said phone, you can pair the two inside the app. Tap the bottom right icon when a song is playing and your PS4 should show up, alongside any other attached Wi-Fi devices. Choose the albums and songs that you like, then use the device manager to switch the music's output to your PS4. After that's done, you should be able to hear both the game and the music through your TV or headphones, and you can adjust music levels inside the app. Number 7. Tweaking the DualShock 4 Big, comfy, and chunky enough to make a satisfying thunk after you lose to another Sekiro boss, the PlayStation 4's controller holds some legitimate secrets. First up, Sony did eventually add a patch to dim the brightness of the light bar. Whilst you can't turn it off altogether, it's better than nothing. Speaking of customization though, if you're playing one particular title and it doesn't let you remap in-game controls, head to Accessibility, then to Button Assignments, and you can remap everything to your heart's content. Sony recently released an official back button attachment with two more paddles that can also be customized. If you're a diehard Call of Duty, Street Fighter, or any other esports player, you'll likely benefit from a totally custom control scheme. Beyond this, the DualShock 4 has another cool trick up its sleeve when it comes to typing. Motion controls. It seems weird at first, but when a keyboard is on screen, push in the right thumbstick and you can tilt your controller to position the cursor instead. It does take some getting used to, but if using the D-pad or swipes on the touchpad isn't your thing, maybe this is. Number 6. Double Tap Quick Switch Granted, this is probably the most well-known of the pointers on here, but the sheer amount of functions you can tie into double tapping the home button makes it worthwhile. For example, double tapping always switches between the last used thing on your PS4, be it a game, app, or console feature. If you need to refer to a certain message thread or party chat, PlayStation Store purchase, or even an internet browser window, use this method to do so much quicker than navigating manually. Number 5. Checking Trophy Progression In-Game a simple feature, but one that many users might have missed throughout the years due to how much it's changed. Holding down the home button will open up the revamped quick menu, listing a plethora of options and customizations that can save you time and effort. 
Far more multifaceted than back at launch, it functions as an access center for every area of your PS4. Online friends can be viewed, you can quickly switch your online status to appear offline, check out communities and groups, look at trophy data, and broadcast if you're a streamer. These aren't just small options, and you can reorder them to best suit whatever you're going to be doing the most. I tend to focus on trophies as it saves time hopping across to the full app, and it means that you can kind of track something in-game. Because right now, Sony are yet to include something that lets you pin a trophy to the in-game screen, and that's just a big old missed opportunity. Number 4. Use your PS Vita as a second controller For all of us hallowed individuals who purchased a mighty oh-so-sweet PS Vita, there is a specific trick just for us. Turns out you can use a PS Vita as a second DualShock 4. Although it won't have support for motion controls, you will be able to use the touchpads on the back. This is super handy as if you've bought a Vita for its huge backlog of PS Plus games, PS1 emulations, or any of the other awesome things it does, and you don't want to shell out for another DualShock 4, just pair this thing instead. Using a Vita does feel incredibly weird, but depending on what you're playing, it's a fine substitute. Plus, if you want to play co-op or just farm one of those trophies that asks you to kill player 2 or lap your rival in a racing game, you can totally do it using this method. Number 3. Viewing Hidden Trophies and Auto Web Search Sony's knee-jerk reaction to the Xbox 360's achievement system has become something of a staple across the last two generations. They added to the overall idea of chasing achievements with a platinum trophy, which showcases base completion of a game, and many players then fell in love with the idea of trophy hunting, searching out that precious platinum trophy to hold up in front of everyone else. Now for this next tip, I will totally admit that I went a good six years of PS4 ownership not realizing that it was a thing. But did you know that you can view hidden trophies? Often tied to story-related missions, spoilers, or genuine secrets, I totally resigned myself to thinking that I had to stumble upon them at some point in gameplay. It's even worse if a hidden trophy is missable first time, meaning that you'll have to play through the whole game again to get it. Well, that doesn't need to be the case. You can actually select the trophy with X to view it, and then hit square to reveal the unlock method right there. Even better, Sony go one further. On this screen, just hit the options button and you'll be able to auto search the internet for how to unlock the trophy itself. Number 2. The Secrets of the Share Button Ultimately, the share button is a multi-tool for capturing moments and, if you like, sharing them. By default, screenshots are a long press of the button, and a short press will save a video clip. Where it gets interesting, though, is a double press will set the start point for a video to be saved. This means that instead of saving the last 15 minutes or whatever you've got it set to, it marks the beginning of a recording for the next allocation of time. If you're setting up to capture a weird glitch or know that nothing was worth recording to a certain point, just double tap to reset the system internal memory and get to sharing the best clips instead. And number one, PlayStation mobile apps have come a long way. I've mentioned apps before in this video, and yes, now there are a whole bunch of them for some reason, but a lot of people don't realize just how helpful the mobile PlayStation app can be. Example one, if you're an old timer who hasn't figured out Discord like little old Jules Gill, you can use the app to speak to your clanmates, planning tonight's raid while you're still at work. Secondly, it's worth reiterating the point about installing a game remotely to then access when you boot the PS4 back up. Third, you'll be able to search for groups, events, and friends through the app. This last one can come in handy when you're busy playing a game and just want to check in on a group while the game's loading. Ultimately, the associated PlayStation apps aren't the greatest thing ever made, but they are an overlooked area of interaction that many players initially scoffed at. I know I did. This mentality was fair enough when compared to things like the dead and buried Xbox Smart Glass app, but if you're looking to squeeze everything out of the realm of PlayStation 4, it is another essential asset. And that's my breakdown of a bunch of PlayStation 4 features that we all pretty much missed. Let me know your own favorites down in the comments below, and please check out the What Culture Gaming podcast. For now, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com, and I'll catch you soon. Hello, YouTube. We're turning things up to 11 with the launch of What Culture Music. It's our brand new channel featuring all those lists you just can't get enough of, including creepy hidden messages in your favorite pop songs. As well as radio-friendly songs that detail literal murder. That's as well as chatty faces where we get personal with you on our sordid musical tastes, in-depth discussion podcasts, and we're even doing quality fun stuff like tournaments and quizzes too. There's going to be something for everybody, so come on over and make some sweet Sweet, sweet music with us. Or just watch the videos, that works too. Like, share and subscribe at the link below and we will see you there. Bye. Bye.